Hello and welcome back to another introduction to SPSS tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover some of the basics on obtaining a descriptive statistics from your data. So we're specifically going to talk about how to get measures of frequency, measures of central tendency, and measures of dispersion. So first thing we want to do is examine our data set and we've got a couple of different types of variables here. So the first two variables that we have, bike team and gender, are both nominal variables, meaning that they convey information about uh, the categories that participants belong to. Specifically, the bike team variable captures information about which bike team each participant belonged to, and there are three possible categories for this variable, the cruisers, the river dogs, and the screaming wheels. The gender variable just captures gender data, so it reports if each participant reported as male or female. All right, and so just some simple data regarding which categories that the participants, each of the participants in our data set belong to. All right, we've also got three variables here that are scale variables, which that's, that's how SPSS denotes continuous variables, variables that measure the amount of something. So the first two variables, week one and week two miles biked, indicates the number of miles that participants biked during their first and second weeks of training respectively. And then the time variable indicates the number of minutes that the participants spent biking during their first week of training. All right, so there's different st uh, descriptive statistics that are gonna be relevant for each of these different types of variables. For nominal variables, we're primarily going to be interested in frequency statistics. So we want to know how many participants fell into each of the categories of the variables. So in order to get that, we go up here to the menu, click on Analyze, click on Descriptive Statistics, and then on Frequencies. Right? And what we can do, we'll reset this and go back to the beginning, all of our potential variables, all the variables that we have available to us are over here in the left box. And any variables that we want frequency statistics for, we can move over to the right box. So we can drag and drop or click on the arrow. So let's, I'll bring my two nominal variables over to the box on the right. We want to make sure that this display frequency tables box is checked. That's how we're going to get our frequency data for our nominal variables. So once we have that, we can click OK. And then when we look at our output, we've got a couple of different tables of statistics that are presented to us. This first box simply just tells us how many observations we have for each of our data and whether uh, those observations have valid data or whether they're missing data. So we have 90 total participants in our data set. For our bike team variable, 87 out of those 90 participants had valid data uh, regarding their, the bike team that they belong to, meaning they, they actually had a bike team indicated. Three of those participants, we didn't have any information with regard to what bike team that they belong to. So that SPSS calls that data missing. For the gender data, we, or the gender variable, we had valid data for all 90 participants. Now if we look at these second two boxes, these give us frequency data for each of the variables independently. So this first box for bike team gives us all of our frequency data for the bike team variable. So we have our three different categories for the bike team, the cruisers, the river dogs, and the screaming wheels. So those are the three different teams that participants could belong to. And this frequency column tells us how many participants belonged uh, to each team. Right? So we had 33 participants were on the cruisers, 29 were on the river dogs, 25 on the screaming wheels that gave us our 87 total valid uh, participant data, uh, valid measures or valid uh, numbers for frequency. And then we had three participants that didn't re didn't we didn't have data for, and so that leads us to all 90 of our participants. All right, so then we have three columns, the percent, the valid percent, and the cumulative percent columns. The percent column just gives us data or the percentage of the participants that belong to each category out of the total number of rows in our data set. So this is out of this 90 total observations. So it includes missing data in the percent. So 36.7% is 33 out of 90. 32.2% is 29 out of 90 and so on, right? And so it, it includes in this the number, the percentage of missing data. So we have our three missing data points represent 3.3% of our total number of observations, out of our 90 total observations. 
The valid percent column, on the other hand, represents the percentage out of the total valid number of observations or the, the total number of observations that actually had data. So you'll notice that these percentages are a little bit higher because they represent the percentage, the number of observations out of 87 instead of 90, right? So 37.9% in the valid percent column represents 33 divided by 87 instead of 33 divided by 90. So that's why all three of these numbers are a little bit higher and that we get the total without any of the missing data. Finally, the cumulative percent column tells us how, what percentage of the observations we have if we add the columns as we move from top to bottom. Right? So 37.9% in the cumulative percent column is exactly the same as the percent in the valid percent column. So it's the, the valid percentage out of the, the total of 87 participants that we actually had data for. But when we get to the river dogs, we have 71.3%. So that includes the total number of participants that were in the cruisers bike team plus the total number that were in the river dogs bike team out of the total of 87. So this is basically saying that 71.3% of the participants in our data set were either on the river dogs or the cruisers. The only participants that it leaves out are the participants on the screaming wheels team. Right? So once we get up to the Screaming Wheels team, obviously 100% of our participants were either on the Screaming Wheels, the River Dogs, or the Cruisers. Again, this 100% represents the valid observations, not all observations, so it excludes the missing data. The gender box down here does the same thing, except for, uh, for it conveys the frequency data for our gender variable. So you can interpret the information in exactly the same way. We just only have two columns in this data rather than three. All right, so now let's move on to data in regards to um, the, the, the descriptive information that we would look for for continuous data. All right, so if we go up here to analyze and click on descriptive statistics and go back to frequencies, let's reset this table. And now let's say we wanted to get information about our number of miles biked, our, our are continuous variables, right? So frequency data is not necessarily going to be the first thing that we look for uh, when it comes to continuous variables. A lot of times we want information about the average values or the range of values that we have. So we're talking specifically about measures of central tendency and measures of frequency, uh, or sorry, measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion with this data. So let's look at how we get that. So let's take our three continuous variables, move them over into this variables table, and let's click on this button that says statistics. So within statistics, we can ask for all the relevant measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion that we can need. So let's say we want mean, median, and mode for these variables, as well as standard deviation, Let's get the minimum and maximum values, the variance, and the range. Okay, so we check all those, click continue, and then I'm going to uncheck the display frequency tables because that's actually not going to be something that I want for my continuous variables at this point. So if we have all that, we click OK. And then when we look at our output here, what we get is a table where all of the rows represent those specific statistics we asked for, the mean, the median, the mode, then all of our measures of dispersion. And our columns represent the individual variables that we wanted those statistics for. All right, so this first column, let's just focus on the first column for now. This is our number of miles biked in week one. So the first thing it gives us is, again, valid, the, the number of valid and missing observations. So this tells us because we have no missing values here, it tells us that so for all 90 participants in our data set, we actually had data for the number of miles that they biked in week one. It gives us the, the mean observation or the mean value of all of those observations. So the average number of miles biked in the first week by all of our participants was about 10.72 miles. The median or middle value was 10 miles and the mode was nine miles, except that we also have this little footnote on the mode that says that multiple modes exist, the smallest value is shown. 
All right, so that just means that nine was one of the most frequently occurring number of miles biked in week one, but there were other mileages um, that were that occurred just as frequently. So SPSS just chooses the lowest mode and gives you that. But if you wanted to find the other modes, you would kind of have to sort through the data yourself and figure out which other observations occurred just as frequently as nine miles. All right. We also get, so our standard deviation, which is in the same units as the measurement. So a standard deviation of 7.56 means that kind of on average, an average observation was within 7.56 miles of the mean. So this is actually in the units of miles. Variance is not in the units of miles, it's actually in the units of miles squared, but this just gives us an idea of how variable our, our, our um, sorry, how variable our variable was, or how, how much variability there was in the number of miles that participants biked in the first week. Uh, the range is simply the maximum value minus the minimum value, so since our maximum value is 66 miles and our minimum value is 1, that gives us the range of 65. All right, so you can interpret the, the data for the other columns in the same way. The other, there's one other way that we can get descriptive statistics in SPSS. So we can go back up to analyze, go back to descriptive statistics, but instead of using frequencies, we can click on this box that says descriptives. All right, if we reset this, we can actually bring all of the same variables over into the variables box click on options and we get most of the same options the only thing is in the descriptive box we can't get the median and mode for whatever reason SPSS doesn't make those options available in this descriptives um, in this descriptives dialog box it makes it available in the frequencies dialog box but we can get all of the same measures of dispersion standard deviation minimum and maximum values range variance um, so we can click continue click OK, and it just presents it in a little bit of a different way. Now your variables are in the rows and your descriptive statistics are in the columns, but you get the, all the same information. So it's really up to personal preference on this, but there's two different ways to get descriptive statistics. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, come back and check out some of the other tutorials I'll put together. Um, but for now, just enjoy kind of going through playing with SPSS and figuring out how to get descriptive statistics for your data. Thanks.